Today on CTV News at 5, Tough to Swallow. A new film suggests food being served at some Alberta health facilities is of poor quality. Plus another delay in the court case against a Mexican man accused of gunning down an associate near Lethbridge. And life is slowly returning to normal for students at the Arrowwood Community School. CTV News with Kayla Carr. Good afternoon. Environment Canada has issued a tornado watch for parts of southern Alberta. The areas under the watch include Lethbridge, Tabor, Milk River, Cardston, Fort McLeod and McGrath. Weather experts say conditions are favorable for the development of severe thunderstorms with the potential to produce tornadoes. The storms may also create large hail, flooding, deadly lightning and powerful winds. Those living in the areas affected by the watch are encouraged to monitor the situation closely as well as secure outdoor property. And we'll hear more, more from Dory in a few moments. A new documentary has been released that explores the quality of food being served at many of Alberta's health care centers and seniors facilities. The documentary was produced by the Alberta Union of Provincial Employees. It focuses on a two-year battle by some Claire's Home residents to get Alberta Health Services to improve the quality of meals being served to many seniors. Terry Vogt reports. He never complains. Maxine Kidd is visiting her husband Robert, who lives at the Willow Creek Continuing Care Centre in Claire's home. She's bringing an orange and some dessert because she's concerned about what he's eating. It's hard on uh, period, but it's, it's bad when uh, you, you feel yourself that the food isn't what it should be. Maxine isn't the only one who feels that way. It doesn't taste like anything. There's no smell. Gaynor Hoagland and Rita Burton have been fighting for two years to get Alberta Health Services to improve the meals. Their battle started when the province phased out full-service kitchens in many rural and small-town hospitals and senior facilities, including the Willow Creek Care Centre. Everything is frozen, pre-cooked, reheated, and lots of it they can't even recognize what it is. So many of them don't want to eat it. If they can't recognize it, they're not going to eat it. Food is bought in bulk and shipped in from other provinces and the U.S. The Alberta the Union of Provincial French. Employees has now released a documentary film that union officials say exposes the quality of food being served at 80 facilities in Alberta, those with fewer than 125 beds. The documentary made its debut Monday evening in Claire's home. Among the crowd were many who have parents, grandparents or other relatives at the continuing care centre. It was a bit scary. Part of me wishes I hadn't have seen it because now I'm so upset about what's happening. But I will be taking steps to email the local representative and, and stay on top of it. Um, these people deserve a lot better than what they're getting. Alberta Health Services claims their meals are consistent with provincial diet guidelines and the Canada Food Guide. We're a Department of Nutrition and Food Services and so at the forefront of our mind is the nutrition, nutritional well-being of the clients that we serve. And so I, I can assure folks that our menu is nutritionally sound. The meals were excellent. Not everyone has seen the documentary or share concerns about the meals. Rita and Gaynor are hoping this film will bring about changes they couldn't get through letter writing and meetings. Terry Vogt, CTV News, Claire's Home. AUP members say they plan to send copies of the film to senior centres, community groups and politicians in hopes of sparking change. A 16-year-old girl is dead after a crash near Bow Island Friday. The girl who was driving a minivan pulled out of the Spitz factory yard and attempted to turn north on Highway 879. A southbound tractor trailer was unable to avoid the minivan and the two vehicles collided. The girl was pronounced dead at the scene. Her passenger was airlifted to a Calgary hospital in serious condition. No one in the tractor trailer was hurt. RCMP are investigating but say no charges will be laid. And a motorbike collision has claimed the life of a man in Medicine Hat. Police pronounced him dead on the scene this morning around 1 o'clock. It happened near Scholten Hill on Cary Drive and Carr Crescent Southeast. Officers are still investigating what may have caused the crash. Police aren't releasing the victim's identity until they've notified next of kin. 
A preliminary hearing is again being rescheduled for a Mexican man accused of gunning down an associate in a drug dispute near Lethbridge. The hearing for 29-year-old Luis Ochoa Gamez was supposed to start in mid-May. Instead, court heard a second lawyer has withdrawn from the case and a new date will have to be set. Ochoa Gamez is charged with second-degree murder in the shooting death of 24-year-old Moro Hernandez Renteria. Renteria was gunned down in the town of Shaughnessy in October 2010. Ochoa Gamez is in the process of obtaining new legal counsel and will return to court on June 25th. And Dory's here now with a first look at weather. Dory, some thunderstorms in the area now. Uh, last night we had those and of course now we have that tornado watch as well. Yeah, and we're even more vulnerable today because we did have that thunder shower activity move through during the overnight hours last night. Some areas got hit a little harder than others. We have some pictures coming from Medicine Hat in the weather cast. But right now, we do have these systems coming up from Montana once again, where temperatures down there hit 35, 36 degrees in some areas today. So very unstable air mass moving north reaching an unstable, already unstable air mass already in existence in southern Alberta. So that's why the watch is in effect right now for a tornadic activity. It's not that it's happening right now, but the elements are there and it is a possibility that we have to be aware of. I'll have more details coming up in a couple of minutes. All right, thanks very much, Tori. Well, since Arrowwood Community School burned in late April, the 82 grade one to nine students have been crammed into the local community center. Now, as Kevin Green reports, things are starting to return to normal, and it's thanks to a huge donation from the Calgary Catholic Schools. For the first time since their classrooms were set on fire, students at Arrowwood School are sitting down at desks. Six portable classrooms were donated by the Calgary Catholic School Board. We are all thrilled to be here. It's a boost at just the right time. We're, we were needing it now. Until this week, the 102K-9 to students at Arrowwood School have been crammed into the community centre after their school was set on fire by an arsonist. Right at the beginning, it was like, whoa, what, what are we going to teach with? How is this going to work? But amazingly enough, we've been able to do it. In large part, they were able to do it because of an outpouring of support from across the province, which helped teachers and students here plough through the adversity. Arrowwood learned how to adapt to hard times. This week, students are creating a theatrical performance titled The Revitalization of Arrowwood, aptly named, say, residents here who worried what could have happened had the school closed. I think it would have just about killed it because um, people won't move to a community where there's no school. In the meantime, next door to the portable classroom, work continues to rebuild the damaged school. It's expected to reopen in the fall. Kevin Green, CTV News, Arrowwood. 20-year-old Theron Majoras was charged in connection with five fires set in Arrowwood including a in April, including the one at the school. He is a former student of the school. A Lethbridge Elementary School is hosting a book bash to help expand students' minds and their library. More than a thousand donated books are on sale in the Dr. Proby Elementary School Gymnasium. There's fiction and non-fiction for all age groups in a variety of genres. Each book costs one dollar and comes with a free bookmark handmade by one of the students. Career Home Builders held a book drive over the weekend to help collect items for the sale. Organizers say the school fundraiser is an investment for the community. I think it's probably the most important thing that we can do for our children and for our community. Um, we all benefit from living in an educated society and, and literacy is the basis of that. Dr. Proby School will be celebrating our 20th anniversary next year. So we're hoping to rejuvenate our library a little bit. And the book sale is open to the public. It runs until 8 o'clock tonight and tomorrow from 9 to 4. The incoming president of the Lethbridge Chamber of Commerce says he's confident Alberta is heading in the right direction, but growth needs to be handled for caution, with caution for now. Darren Boraz met with media this afternoon to discuss the Alberta Chamber's annual general meeting. 28 of the 29 initiatives brought forward at the meeting were passed, including a pair co-sponsored by Lethbridge. The key initiative deals with water for sustainability, ensuring availability of usable water to the driest parts of the province in the south. Boraz says the recession may seem over in Alberta, but it's important to keep some perspective. I think we have to be very cautious though. I think that uh, there's, you know, in Alberta we seem to maybe be a little bit ahead of the curve, but however, I think uh, on a national basis we still have to be very, very cautious that, you know, it's with the impact of Europe and everything else that's going on. We, I don't think we're going to jump the gun too soon. 
And Lethbridge also co-sponsored a bill which asks that all new roadways include alternative modes of transportation such as bicycles. Officials say it's aimed at promoting environmentally friendly means of travel. Grizzly bear discoveries in southern Alberta are higher than previous years. Fish and wildlife officers have caught more than a dozen bears in the Pincher Creek and Cardston area in the past couple weeks. Several ranchers found some of their cattle dead and buried near their property. Pincher Creek officers say this is how grizzly bears store their food. They've determined the cattle were killed by grizzlies and are taking measures to protect the public and the bears. Even with, with the proper proper techniques that the agriculture is using you know we do have times when uh, when bears do do uh, get into trouble by killing livestock and those particular bears uh, depending on the sex of the bear and the age category we uh, we move them various distances away from the conflict area Officers say ranchers in the area are accustomed to grizzlies and demonstrate proper management of herds and disposal of carcasses to avoid attracting bears. Well, you may have heard of directories that map out fast food joints, but now there's also a Southern Alberta slow food guide. The free online directory shows you where to get locally grown food and puts you in touch with the producers. Mike LeBlanc has more on this week's Farm.TV. Farmers markets are becoming more and more popular as a place for consumers to buy produce from local farmers and producers. But how do you find information about producers who are willing to sell good, clean, fair, local food? With that in mind, Slow Food Southern Alberta has recently produced a directory called The Faces of Our Food. Talking about the families, what they did, how they did it, and also the people that prepare this food in the restaurants. So some of the restaurants are featured. The free directory has quickly become very popular. There's photographs of the farmers. There's photographs of doing what they do, and they talk about their story. They tell how they started, why they do it. Maybe it's been in their, their family for generations, or maybe it's something they just started recently. What we had everyone do is to, for instance, if there's farm gate sales, let us know there's farm gate sales. If you have a website, what your telephone number is. If we can access it at a grocery store or a health food store, what restaurants handle it. So people are looking for this kind of food and it just seemed like such a good fit to provide them with access to good, clean, fair local food. Farm TV is brought to you by DA Building Systems. After the break, Dory will have more information on that tornado watch that Environment Canada just issued. Right now, let's take a look at today's markets.